Well, welcome. Come on in. I think we're going to test uh, the audio one last time. I'm looking for it. We're good. Okay. Um, I believe I may be the only English professor on the uh, agenda today, uh, today and tomorrow. And I'm not sure exactly how they let me in, um, but maybe in the next 40 minutes you can tell me whether this is a, a, a complete mistake. Um, or whether some, there are some uh, things that we can be in conversation with together. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I just came from Phoenix, for goodness sakes. And uh, the, uh, the promise of some kind of 80 degree weather tomorrow uh, and rain today um, is, is really brilliant. Uh, okay, if we can, um, if we can. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to start, if we can, uh, just a few a few years back in uh, the delightful year of 1977, when, of course, um, WordPress, I'm sure, was a pigment um, in a young Matt Melody's eye. Um, that was a year, as I was growing up, when uh, I look back on the 70s, that everybody I knew had three kind of uh, life goals. Three things that they were uh, out to, to kind of try to capture during their lifetime. Um, these, of course, you'll recognize as acute powers of perception, um, heightened awareness of one's surroundings, and modular extensions of capacity. Right? This was... Okay, you may recognize these uh, maybe more familiar, uh, more familiarly as X-ray vision, um, of course, as a spidey sense, and uh, who wasn't envious of Bruce Wayne's utility belt? Um, superpowers were largely the talk in, uh, around our neighborhood, and almost the only thing that we could uh, we could you know spend our time uh, engaged in as we. Uh, traded comics as we uh, ran down to kind of get the newest Batman, or uh, bless bless us, watch yet another uh, episode of Batman and Robin. Uh, it explains maybe a little of uh, the campiness that was the, the, the 1970s. But that vision of superpowers, um, in large part, as I look at my son's generation, is, is not the, the primary focus of their world. Um, it doesn't seem to be the regular conversation in um, his interaction with his friends. And so rhetorically, I'm going to propose uh, for the next few minutes that for a mobile generation, um, that may be at least in part because so many of the powers that we looked to in, uh, in 77 uh, as just beyond our reach uh, are now in their pocket. Okay? And in a world of uh, hundreds of thousands of apps that can uh, extend their capacity in, in, in small and large ways, uh, there is something a little blasé about my son's view of Superman uh, or Batman. Uh, again, maybe it's the tights. So where I want to begin, I think, is in 2007, because this was a, a pretty seminal year for us at Abilene Christian University when we began to realize that we were about to see a generation moving toward us um, that was uh, going to be the first generation completely educated in an internet world, in a connected world. And in fact, it's this year. We were, we were forecasting five years out. This year, the incoming class of 2011 um, that has never known a classroom that wasn't connected, right? And increasingly, um, so many of them bringing connected devices, uh, bringing a variety of form factors that are um, always on and always with them, um, leave us wondering, as we think about my son's generation, why the schoolroom, why the classroom has to be the only place in, in their province where they're being asked to leave their cape at the door. <laughs> Right? I, again, this is a rhetorical flourish. So my apologies for the hyperbole. But in, in some ways, right, this is, um, you know, the classroom is often compared, the conferences I attend, to an airplane, right? The last pocket of the world where we're asked uh, to turn off, to kind of tune out and doze. 
it, it, it's a different kind of way of thinking about uh, our educational systems that this could end up being a lost generation if we don't find a way to really tap into um, the social media connections that they make with the world around them. Uh, so I want to spend uh, just, just a second looking back to 2007, and then I'll try and uh, speed us along, um, if I can, to uh, moving towards the present and kind of how WordPress fit, for, fits, fits into this. Uh, in 2007 at, at ACU, we were sitting and watching a number of uh, kind of convergences. Um, the ECAR study on undergraduates in IT, uh, for the first time, was noticing that on college campuses, a switch had just happened. And many of you will, will remember this, where um, those students that were coming to our campuses for the first time, um, uh, a larger percentage of them were bringing laptops than desktops. Right? And the significant amounts of money that have been invested in infrastructure across our campuses and in our dorms for uh, Ethernet connections at every seat um, were now sitting unused. Um, my nephew is a college freshman uh, coming to college this last fall. Didn't even know why I would be trying to give him an Ethernet cable. Um, why wouldn't he want to be on wireless with the other 80 people on his dorm hall? So we had a conversation. Um, so, this, this is a, a significant moment where, as we're sitting in uh, a, um, a classroom in our Center for Teaching and Learning at ACU uh, with a group of technologists and campus leaders, uh, January 2007, we just read the eCar report, and uh, somebody says, hey, let's get together this Monday and uh, watch um, Steve Jobs' keynote on the iPhone. But it happened over the Christmas break. Everybody kind of gets together in the room. And um, what, what struck me most, I'd already seen it, but what struck me most was one of our deans, uh, she'd come out of the College of ed Education, and she's sitting there after a long career in education. She kind of pushes back from the table and says, this changes everything. Right? And I, again, I think, I, I don't want to be showing up today saying, whether it's the iPhone or whether it's WordPress, that, that what we're proposing is, is a one-tool solution. Um, but I think we do understand that there was an appreciable difference in, in the ways that we engage tools and the ways we engage people beyond our physical presence, um, this side of mobility, uh, rather than maybe before 2007, 2008. So we spent a great deal of time at, at ACU over the, the uh, months that followed that kind of um, insight, uh, creating white papers, creating uh, conversations on our campus, uh, campus between faculty and between IT professionals to say, Okay, if we believe this is a uh, disruption that's coming, how do we try and leverage its power rather than getting caught in its undertone? Okay. Uh, and so, in, uh, in, in a program that was leading to the fall of 2008, uh, we welcomed our first uh, mobile class into the Connected Initiative uh, at ACU, where every incoming freshman ended up receiving an iPhone or an iPod Touch. And we were going to artificially inflate this, uh, this audience, this population, and see um, years before that, those kinds of ubiquity were going to make their way into other campuses around the country, what could be done? Uh, one of the things that we spent a little bit of time doing at 2007-2008 was uh, funding a group of, uh, of student filmmakers to work with some faculty members and produce a, vision, a video vision statement. And I, I don't know that... that um, Many of you have seen this, but it's still out there on YouTube. Uh, and it, it kind of supercharged the discussion of mobile learning uh, in 2008 to begin to see what it might look like. Right? All the mobile apps you know, that were mocked up in this were uh, uh, produced in Keynote as little QuickTime exports. And they're I mean, entirely uh, fraudulent. Right? Uh, we had campuses knocking on our door months after this came out saying, we'd like to buy that, please. Uh, and and, and we, we would as well. Um, but by the time that uh, incoming class showed up, fall of 2008, um, we had made a dent, at least, in trying to produce um, some of the campus services that have now become uh, requisite as we think about the mobile web. Right? And, and, and AC was hardly the only one. MIT and Vanderbilt, a number of schools, uh, certainly the, uh, the guys at Terribly Clever that uh, started at Stanford, lots of folks that are kind of getting their arms around what mobility is going to mean to serving students and serving um, our classes. Let me say, and this is maybe goes without saying, but as we look at that kind of first-gen mobility, 
one of the things that, that strikes us now is how focused it was on content distribution. Okay, even the mobile learning part of the project. I mean, yes, bus schedules and other things, uh, course schedules, there's information that I need to get from the university, whether it's campus maps, calendars, and so on. Um, but even the way that we were thinking about deploying mobility in classroom environments or serving the, the learning part of the infrastructure was so focused on how do we deliver podcasts, how do we deliver handouts, how do we, how do we deliver the content, the stuff, in a way that was faculty-directed, okay, largely one way. What many of us know in here that are connected to the learning enterprise on our campuses is that education is trying to break that habit. Right, that learning going into the 21st century will only be seen as a one-way enterprise. That our classrooms will look largely like this room, where you're sitting beautifully listening, um, and I'm talking at you. Now, many of the learning environments we're trying to create on campuses across the country right now uh, are looking for ways to increase uh, engagement uh, and uh, students, uh, leveraging student creation as part of that project. I think this was just a couple screenshots from that uh, first instance of the uh, AC Mobile Core where we were tying into some things. Uh, current campus infrastructure like Zytho's document recruit retrieval, uh, Google Apps for Education, and so on, uh, with over on the far right some early experiments in student response systems, uh, kind of mobile clickers and so on. Okay, let's start to let's get this into WordPress. By 2009, um, this is the spring of that very first year. We were still just kind of itching for uh, connecting the classroom experience, the learning experience, more meaningfully with, uh, with the, the web. Now, let me say, for the first two years of this, this entire uh, world, as far as I can tell, most of the LMS uh, producers were sitting mobility out. Okay, except for some rare exceptions, the major players in the LMS uh, landscape were waiting to see if the mobile landscape was going to be a fad. Right? Um, we don't we, we don't want to invest in this too early. I mean, it could kind of come and go. Right? And um, happily, WordPress uh, was introduced to us uh, just about that same time as um, a, really from a group of faculty renegades that were there on the, the uh, uh, margins of our campus and had already just bolted from Blackboard or, you know, fill in the blank, uh, and were working with uh, WordPress.com, Blogger, and a number of other sites just to try to find um, some mobile connections, places that their students could free freely contribute content as well as have content directed toward them. Uh, and so there was a lot of creativity, a lot of uh, energy in this, this early period of uh, experimentation. Um, when we brought the pilot on campus, uh, it was just the right time. Again, WP Touch was just kind of coming of age. Uh, many of you are you know, uh, maybe now happy WP Touch users. WP Touch Pro is out now. Uh, lots of power in this plugin. But the main thing that this let us show our IT community on campus as we were looking to partner with them uh, was that look? Uh, open press. I mean, open source doesn't have to be scary. And this is a way for us to leverage a development community of thousands um, on a small West Texas campus. Um, and I'll I'll give you another couple examples in a minute. But we've rarely bumped into questions in our WordPress implementation where we were the first one running into an issue, right? And that seems to me uh, going forward. The, the power of uh, this platform. Um, so in uh, 2008, as we, uh, 2009, sorry, in the fall, as we were launching our WordPress uh, MU deployment, uh, we went from a pilot of six to uh, 189 faculty members producing just over 300 uh, class blogs and uh, more than 3,000 users in that first um, user base. Largely because we tried to parallel the experience of creating a WordPress blog with creating all the other course tools on campus. That meant that our developers worked overtime creating some custom plugins, for example, for single sign-on authentication. Um, and, I, and I can direct you to them later if you've got any interests in uh, course blogs or trying to connect uh, WordPress to some of your information systems. Um, that is has been running for the last two years, basically, and a, a, a largely connecting 
uh, authentication, and just the simplicity of ads and drops. Um, students are added and dropped to um, all the class blogs and subscribers automatically without a faculty member ever having to think about it. Um, and I would, I would say that in large part that would be one of the, the focuses of why that transition is so smooth. Um, one of the other things that we rolled, rolled out, well, let me say a, a couple things about the custom theme, I guess, first before jumping into this. Um, why a custom theme, right? There's hundreds of other themes that are already out there in uh, the wild and WordPress. Uh, we felt in that first year that there was going to be, be some benefit in training in trying to, to roll out this brand new system on our campus to new users. Uh, let's give them a common experience. Let's be able to train toward a single theme with a, you know, a single set of uh, settings uh, so that we're not going to overwhelm uh, training support. Um, and so working with a graphic designer in our design uh, program, uh, we created a custom theme that we, we wanted to be able to provide them with maximum flexibility in the kind of look and feel of uh, the blog. This is the minimal version of it. Um, the knife is optional. By the way, this is a Hitchcock button. Um, but that uh, it was it was certainly beneficial to us uh, to not be getting quirky little uh, problems with one theme that we weren't seeing maybe system wide in another 50 other themes. Um, it also allowed us uh, the ability to kind of customize experiences to just WP Touch branding uh, into the portal. Uh, that was pretty important on the part of our web team um, to be able to bounce back and forth between a class blog and the rest of the portal. Um, so this is WP Touch, but it's um, rebranded up top. Um, but it was pretty important for us to be able to uh, try to inject um, maybe some superpowers back into this experience of uh, WordPress. Um, this is, you know, again, 2009 before uh, Post by Email makes it into the general WordPress code base. And we had just been out there in the, the worldwide, you know, kind of uh, Web 2.0 world saying, man, the experience of, of tools like Postgres, the experience of tools like Dropio. Any Dropio users? Um, really? Are you kidding me? Oh, man, it's a gem. Um, the experience of these spaces where I can simply send a photo, you know, a, a piece of content to a, a commonly, you know, served space uh, by email. Uh, it struck us that for the mobile users, long before, you know, uh, we figured out file systems on these little devices, um, that, that email was the least common denominator, right? And most of these apps were giving... Uh, giving students, in fact, with the ability to get content off of them nimbly, quickly, uh, with a simple email. Uh, and so in tying our blog system uh, back to our Gmail system on campus, each blog was given an, a, uh, a private email account, uh, and using Posty, yet another you know, example of running into just the right plugin at just the right time, uh, we were able to leverage a campus-wide post by email system at launch. Uh, and I'll say uh, the, the campus-wide email system changed the way we thought about class blogging there. Uh, because now I don't have to limit the student's ability to contribute to the class blog, right? Uh, you go into many LMS kind of uh, silos, and the focus of the space is what the teacher has, has kind of, the teacher has total control of the front page. This is the place for my announcements, for my content, for my whatever, right? <laughs> Welcome. And so um, this is this is actually Michael against the designer for, for the themes, uh, and this is his course where um, the main class blogs site for them was um, a place where students were contributing regular blog posts in a way that was systematized over the semester, um, and they were contributing assessments that could be discussed and kind of unpacked in class. Um, this is a photography class blog from one of his colleagues um, where. The, the uh, prof was asking students on a weekly basis, again, on an assigned basis, uh, to assess uh, key photographers in the, uh, the history of, of the course kind of focus and to provide content to the blog, but also uh, maybe examples that would be discussed in more detail. Um, the, the third example I want to look at before we, we uh, press on is um, what happens when we kind of kick the doors open on the silo? Okay, um, now ACU is still 
a fairly conservative place um, as far as our, our web kind of practices go. And it, it was rattling some uh, some cages a bit to, to, to bring in WordPress at all. And the very first semester that we opened it, um, we made some compromises um, at the last minute so that every single class block that would be created by default would be set to private, subscribers only. Okay. Uh, and reasonable, there were FERPA things up in the air and, and people were, were uh, they, they weren't sure, they weren't confident in what the answers were going to be yet. Um, and so, those defaults largely held on as the common practice, the institutional way of thinking about class blog. Um, Jim Groom was mentioned in a, in a previous uh, uh, presentation this morning, and his example at Mary Washington has been the opposite. Um, uh, Jim, they, they set up by default, every class blog created for one of the, uh, the teachers on campus is set to public. They're wanting to instill in their, their students an opportunity to participate in the discussions, the real discussions of the open web. And that was an institutional agenda item, and largely the, you know, the, the, the vast majority of their class blogs have remained public. Right? So defaults matter. Uh, make the decisions carefully, I think, before your institution ends up being saddled by them. Uh, but this is a professor who has opened up his class blog. Now, again, the keys are in his hand. Um, every faculty member has that, that uh, capacity. Um, and what that means for this, this uh, particular blog is that a, uh, an alum that's just received a, uh, the ability to produce a, a cover for a coveted architecture uh, magazine is uh, able then to give the process uh, back to the students. So he's invited as a, as a uh, contributing member of the blog, provides comments to student uh, questions on the blog. Um, a really great opportunity for our external audience of alums to be able to inter interact with the classroom itself. A whole host of models, let me not get uh, uh, slowed down too much. In uh, 2010, fairly quickly, um, I guess in the opening comments we were told that 75% of the uh, speakers today had some significant connection to New England, and you've already uh, found me out that I'm one of the, the people really screwing up that curve. Um, but um, here's my, my uh, local color example. Um, here in 2010, we were looking at a, uh, a freshman seminar class that serves uh, 1,000 students. I don't think my purples are showing up very well. Uh, it serves 1,000 students um, every semester coming in, um, in in their first semester. They're all taking that freshman seminar class. Uh, and when we were out looking for models on the web, Sandell's Justice course had just gone live between Harvard and, and uh, WGBH. So I don't know if there's anybody in here that's responsible for that site, but thank you. Uh, a remarkable site where content media was being provided to the open web with conversations that, that external audiences could register to be a part of, but those conversations were kind of private, public. Right? So it was a... It was a a, uh, a kind of a hybrid space that was doing two things at once, and that sparked our interest. Uh, and so here we, we moved into a magazine theme, obviously, but um, uh, a, another custom theme project where we were looking to serve the particular needs of this course. Uh, look, we've got you know, 15 speakers during the semester providing spotlights every Monday. But then on Wednesdays and Fridays, this, this unique class would splinter into 35 or 36 units, discussion sections, right, where they had a chance to try and take that content further um, in, in uh, individual atoms. Um, but whether it's Blackboard, whether it's WordPress, there's not a model for making that happen simply. I want students to be able to be a part of the macro blog and the micro blog, but I don't want them to be two different spaces. And so it turned out that wasn't a, that wasn't a, uh, a problem we had to you know, lay at the feet of our IT professionals. It was a WordPress developer problem. And very nimbly, we were able to develop two themes that seemed to fit kind of hand in glove as one experience for the students when they hit that upper right hand yellow ribbon. If they're enrolled in one of those 36 classes, one of those 36 blogs, it automatically links them directly to their site. And, and then links them back when they're done to the main portal. Really nice, transparent as far as the end user is concerned. Um, but this is, yet again, one of the things that, that really sets WordPress apart in, in uh, my mind for a university campus, because users can be coming to us 
uh, with new capabilities, new ideas, and it's possible within two weeks, two months, those are already deployed. Right? I don't remember the last time that our LMS called me up asking to add new features um, or them moving into production quite that nimbly. Uh, again, just another couple uh, glimpses of the magazine team. Um, it will, as a part of our general education uh, curriculum, be deployed in a number of different um, iterations uh, across the, the student's experience. Uh, and then we continue to kind of plug away at, sorry, bad pun, um, a plug in development on campus and uh, working with WordPress developers has been huge, not just authentication and some of the administration plugins, uh, but this was before the, the WordPress 3 update that really simplified horizontal menus, right, a lot of the systems. Uh, back in the days when WordPress kind of cared what kind of content you wanted to put together on the sidebar, right? And so just working with somebody to say, look, is it okay if, if categories and pages and URLs could get along and, and all be in, in one widget, that'd be great. Uh, and then 2011, let me just uh, mention a couple uh, projects that we're in the middle of, and then we'll try and uh, open up to questions or to you know, what this is sparking. and. Uh, uh, parallel work on your own campuses. Um, largely through discussions at uh, a couple conferences this last year with uh, Jim Groom and with uh, Gardner Campbell, so you may know, uh, he's at Baylor recently, now he's up at Virginia Tech, um, about the capabilities of what Gardner likes to call mother blogs or aggregator blogs. Um, so where students get to own their own content um, on a, a blog that is individually created, but through an aggregator plugin that, uh, that Jim started using several years ago called Feed WordPress, and you may know it, um, those students can categorize a particular post so that it's also sucked up into the class block. The students still own their own work. Um, all comments still happen on the student's blog, right? The discussions they create are their own. Um, and yet there is a single centralized space where the course uh, conversations can, can be uh, brought up together. Um, so we feel like this is the perfect, this is a perfect uh, solution that uh, can really connect with uh, e-portfolios, discussions that have been uh, ongoing on our campus. And um, if any of you are doing anything interesting with e-portfolios or uh, what some of my colleagues at USC like to call blog folios, uh, uh, then I'd, I'd be fairly interested in talking to you uh, later. But that, uh, every student that, uh, when they come back this fall on campus, um, so 3,800 or, or thereabouts at ACU, uh, will automatically have had a WordPress blog created, and those portfolios will just be uh, waiting to get tied into the general education curriculum. Okay? Um, so, so one of the, the side projects that I think will end up being a spinoff of that is, I think, looking for ways to make blogging more accessible to the new user. Um, and I think be, because of the recent popularity of Tumblr, I think that's sparking some conversations um, on our campus and looking at how Tumblr has kind of captured um, the simplicity of the app experience uh, with the, the ability to bring a lot of high-level content into uh, a student-owned space quickly. Um, so that, that needs to be mobile connected, uh, but it also needs on the back end, on the dashboard end, maybe to be a little uh, simpler at times than the dashboard can be to the new user. Uh, a couple other things that we're, th that we're throwing around that we'd like to kind of tackle, we'll see. Um, one of them was, was actually an NEH grant, and I will, we'll see if that ends up uh, coming through, but for something called Time Press, um, we feel like there's some really rich ways where um, a WordPress um, visualization for time-based content could be connected to uh, something like custom taxonomies and the new versions of WordPress um, so that groups of faculty and students could collaborate on uh, common timelines. Uh, again, this is a general education humanities focus um, in a collaborative way that, uh, that also gives us a lot of flexibility on how that, that, co that common database essentially is going to be visualized in different classes or different formats. Um, and then we, <laughs> I keep uh, pestering Poll Daddy, um, but I, I'm looking for a way, I think, for us to connect poll rating uh, into some kind of back-end database that allows us to do some very basic assessment 
um, faculty still miss their grade books. So even after they, they may have left the LMS, they're looking for a simple way to be able to connect grading to blog reading, blog view. And it feels like there are there some ways that um, uh, that even the basic five-star uh, rating plugins might be able to give us some of that, um, certainly not all of the sophistication we might have in, in other rubric solutions. Uh, let me end my comments with uh, just something that was a closing comment of my first word camp, which was in Dallas a couple of years ago. Matt Holloway had come in, um, and he was reflecting on social media, and he said, um, if it's going to be successful, you've got to give your user superpowers in the first 30 minutes. Right? And that kind of stuck with me as I was driving back to Apple and reflecting on our, our uh, WordPress instance. Uh, it struck me that, that education folks probably need to be hearing that as well. That as, as our faculty and our, and our technologists kind of come together around programs like WordPress, uh, we've got to be looking for ways to make learning relevant to a, a connected mobile generation. Um, and we've got to be, I think, urging, advocating for greater openness, uh, connecting our students with the real conversations of the web. Um, so with that, let me let me uh, offer the mic to uh, to anybody. We've got, I think, just a couple minutes. Any comments? Any uh, anybody with experiences, please. Uh -huh. oh, I, I just a, a quick question. Uh, you spoke about your Theme, and I was wondering how how applicable is it to other places, and is it open to you? Um, I, we're certainly open. I think um, the very first theme that we developed on uh, ACU blogs um, there in the footer, we um, we said just please contact us if you, you'd uh, like to make uh, use of that because it was developed by a professional developer on our faculty. I wanted him to be involved in that process, even just for his own professional development, to be able to say, hey, this many people are um, uh, are using this, this work that he produced for the university. So uh, I'll, I'll put you in touch with him. Very interesting. Can you say more about where we would learn about the time press? I, and and time time press is a grant proposal right now, right? It's um, it, it was looking forward. I'd love to say that it existed, but it's very much at the connected movie stage. Of, um, it's a vision rather than a product. Uh, but willing, I mean, willing to look at look for collaborators. Please. And, and then down front. You mentioned in your presentation the change going from education being a banking methodology where you know all deposits information folks, sure. yet it still looks in the mobile WordPress as here's just information dump either either way, and not a lot of interactivity. And I was at an Apple conference uh, earlier this summer where they spoke of developing pedagogical tools similar to Angry Birds, where there's these incremental steps of education, frequent failure, but you know, immediate correction, immediate response. How do you see uh, mobile usage of WordPress adapting to education in such a manner? Great. Let, let me offer a couple of quick examples. Um, I I don't think the destination we're shooting at, and I'm, this is putting my mobile hat on for just a second, is the widgetization or the uh, the appization of the enterprise, right? That we're going to take the curriculum and break everything down into these chunks so that uh, when we get there, Chem 211. It's got 30 apps that have been developed, and you know that course. I mean, just the development time, the kind of investment. Even if you could get 20 developers on the same page, right? That that seems like a false destination, a false hope. Um, I think it's on on the um, uh, the faculty working with students to design spaces that are deploying collaboration. Um, a number of the examples, the way that ways that we've used Posty. Um, to ask students to go out to find content, maybe in the first five minutes of class, and to post it up to the blog so we can have a conversation ten minutes from now. Right? Even though the blog is kind of a centralized dumping ground, I'm not the only one doing the dumping. That's a high view of education. That's um, that there are ways that we can make sure these these learning kind of these collaborative spaces are as open and as interact not interactive in a flash way, but interactive or kind of collaborative as possible. Um, I, 
catch me offline, but there are a couple, two or three other examples I think of different faculty that are using that instant publishing uh, version of the, the, the blog for some of them. And I think we have one more question and we need to wrap up. I'm talking about freshman entering the HCU in the month. What do you guys think of the faculty at this, this start? Uh, are you, what are you going to say? Um, this is what we want. This is what the school is capable of. Um, how do you. No, and, and I, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm getting at your question. The, the superpowers, <laughs> as it relates to WordPress or as it relates to just broadly the, the, the program? Well, Sarah, how do you offer? Um, I mean, I, I think there's a meme right now in um, a lot of mobile learning circles that is exactly moving in the right direction. It's kind of hinted at in um, the abstract that we've got to be about creating, um, uh, allowing our students to be creators rather than simply consumers of their education. Um, and so I think there, um, there are ways that um, at ACU we're, we're fighting a second, kind of a multi-front war, and WordPress is providing us one really nice set of tools for uh, trying to leverage students as participants in the world of ideas, the marketplace of ideas. Um, we've just rolled out a, a learning studio, which, which I'm the director of, a uh, uh, digital media kind of creation space in our information comments. That's largely about saying, look, this is a new literacy. And it's got to live right there next to the writing center and the speaking center to make sure that our students are participating in creating objects of digital media. Um, that exhibit kind of sophisticated rhetorical choices. Um, how are they communicating their messages with um, the wider world? Um, and many of the, the messages that, that we're increasingly kind of turning to are mobiles as creation devices. Um, so anybody that's got some connection to K through 12 might talk to me offline. Uh, we're doing something called an iPad Studio in a Box that we've been supporting for a while. Um, and, and a variety of other things, just trying to say, look, if, you're, if your school district is handing out mobiles and allowing the teachers to kind of say, um, here's all the apps I'm going to dump on them so I can save you uh, and, and let you go back to rote learning, it, it, you know, we're just replacing one outdated model with another hipper looking outdated model. Okay, wait, are we out? Oh, can you restate oh, yeah. the it, question? It, it, yeah, and do I need to restate the question? Yes, yeah. you're very helpful. Thank you. there, there's a mic halfway up if somebody's got a question or a comment. I'm just wondering if ACU has a mobile site website because I'm going to be on my iPhone. Is that right? Anything? Oh, yeah. bless me. <laughs> it, it should be m.acu.edu is the main portal of the three. Um, the three tabs that you saw in the, in the main uh, illustration a second ago, two of those tabs are authenticated, but the first tab, you know, I mean, it's it's the campus information kinds of stuff for visitors and others. Um, the portal is now three years old and, and has had some iteration to it. Um, ACU blogs is just blogs.acu.edu. Uh, that'll give you a little more information about some of the, the uh, projects that we've just talked about. Um, and then acu.edu slash connected. It's starting to sound like a commercial unless I'm right there. But uh, acu.edu slash connected uh, will provide some mobile learning reports that we put together on an annual basis to try and give you a sense of what's been going on there. And we've been called kind of a petri dish, which we're trying to take in, in good ways. Something's growing there. Um, and the, the third of those annual reports should be without, uh, out within the month. Anybody else? Please. I can repeat your question if you want to holler it out. Are there any other WordPress plugins or themes you recommend in your search for things from mobile? Right. Um, I know that we've got a list on uh, the, just the main blogs at ac.edu at the very bottom of the, the footer, uh, a list of the, the uh, plugins we've been using most regularly. Um, I mean, you can see the way that we're kind of trying to leverage WordPress is very different, I think, than a lot of the, the folks coming at it from the CMS side, which I you know, it's one of the things I'm looking forward to hearing a lot about while I'm here. Um, but the kinds of plugins that we're also, you know, leveraging are different. Um, really, WP Touch, Posty, uh, Paid WordPress, those are the ones I would consider infrastructure. Like, if they didn't exist, things would break. Um, 
I, I may be overlooking one, but but for the most part, most of the other plugins are just helping uh, faculty to uh, enable or or embed media quickly and easily. And again, you know that that's such a a personal choice it seems like anymore. Um, now let me think about it. Please, we'll give you the last word. Do you have the same content for your mobile site versus your regular sites, or is it limited for you know putting something on a small screen? Okay, so um, the I mean, WP Touch on the, uh, the the mobile class sites, which is what I'm primarily focusing on here, uh, we've tried to uh, pre be pretty relentless about not deploying plugins that would end up being Flash-based on the desktop only. Issue and some others, you know, I mean, they're, they're powerful tools, um, but they're creating kind of a hampered, partial experience for the mobile user. And so we've been trying to, in this experimental phase, create an equity or a parity between those two experiences on the class side. Um, and, and early on that meant we were going YouTube over Vimeo, I know some of those things have changed now. Um, and so no, we, we really were working toward creating just across the board. The faculty member doesn't have to think about it, right? Has never largely tweaked their their mobile interface or their, that mobile experience. Um, I think over on the WWW side, the, the main web marketing side, uh, where we have also just gone, undergone a CMS changeover, um, that a great deal of work had been done on the mobile interface for that. And I don't think the company has actually delivered on that yet. Um, somebody can go to acu.edu and just tell me if a mobile site comes up, but I don't think so. I don't think it's there yet, which becomes kind of ironic. Okay, um, thank you so much for coming. I, I saw one or two other hands. Just feel free to come on up.